Good evening. I was at the cross in the woods on Friday. I love to go to that place as a day of prayer and reflection, like a mini retreat. They have noon mass on Fridays, just to let you know. And it's a beautiful place. How many of you have been to the cross in the woods? Pretty much everybody, right? It's nice because they offer the sacrament of reconciliation so that I can go to confession, then go to Mass, and I am able to pray in quiet. There is a shrine there to St. Peregrine, who is the patron saint for cancer patients. And that's where I pray for all the parishioners who are enduring cancer. This is a personal devotion of mine because 36 years ago, my mother was not able to say the magical words cancer-free. She was not able to say those words. So I might as well pray for that blessing to be granted to other people. So that's what I do. Pray to St. Peregrine. Before I made my way back, I talked to Father Steve on the phone, who told me that the weather here in the Tri-Cities was pretty bad. He said that there was lots of rain and big storms, and he was not kidding. When I came back, my car got a free car wash. <laughs> and on Washington Avenue, those that were on the beer trolley, they got a free shower. <laughs> those were big storms yesterday. In the south right now, the big storm is named Alberto. I don't know who comes up with those names, but certainly we pray for those who are on the path of big storms, whatever they may be. The readings of this weekend speak of storms. The gospel brings us to the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, and Jesus is getting ready to go to uncharted territory. He is ready to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, to the area of Gerasa or Gerash, the land of the Gadarenes of the Gerasenes. That was the unknown territory. This is the place where people should not go, and so therefore the disciples are concerned. Why are you going there, Jesus? But Jesus doesn't seem to be concerned. So Jesus takes a nap, he sleeps. The gospel tells us that Jesus is sleeping at the stern of the boat. Jesus sleeps on a cushion. So he is pretty comfortable, he is not concerned. But the disciples are terrified as the waves are breaking the boat. But it's interesting to know in this chapter of Mark, Mark 4, where Jesus sleeps, because he sleeps at the stern or the aft of the boat. That's the farthest back portion of the boat. In a boat, that's where you decide the direction of the boat. But I wonder what concerns the disciples more, the actual storm or the sleep of Christ? Don't you care, Lord, that we are dying in this storm? They cried out in desperation. Think of the perfect storms in your own life. What bothered you the most? The storms themselves or the absence of God? I am sure that you have had storms in your own life. What bothered you? the storms themselves, or the absence of God. It might have been the storm in the form of health, yourself or someone you loved, or the death of a loved one, or a business that you worked so hard to build up and seeing it falling right in front of you. Perhaps an addiction in someone you love, or infidelity, or domestic violence, or suicide, could be a storm of any kind, a mental health diagnosis that came out of nowhere, 
an Alzheimer's diagnosis, the list can go on, anything. Or a combination of several things at the same time, for when it rains, it pours, literally. But the question remains, what bothers you the most? The storms themselves or the absence of God? As I read Mark 4, I wonder what concerned the disciples more, the actual storm or the sleep of Christ. Don't you care, Lord, that we are dying in this storm? They cried out in desperation. In the first reading, Job, after losing everything, his health, his wealth, his family, he also raised his voice. Now, God also raised his voice. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said to him, Where were you, Job, when I laid the foundations of the world? Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? Tell me. In the gospel, we also see Jesus waking up at the cry of the disciples. Promptly, Jesus wakes up. There is no five more minutes, please, no. He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, quiet, be still. The wind ceased, there was great calm. Contrary to the disciples' thinking, Jesus was always there. In the perfect storms of life, Jesus is always there. But fear blinds us. Fear darkens our souls to the point of not being able to see that the Lord is there. As we cross the sea of life into uncharted territory, may we be aware of Christ's presence. May we never live in fear, only in love. Knowing that Jesus is by the aft, comfy, on a cushion, by the stern, guiding the church. That as we worry, he is not worried because he has power. So to the one that make all things new, to him be glory and honor and power forever and ever. Amen.